Good morning. And I'll say good morning again. It is so good to be back with you all, and I can't tell you how appreciative uh, Joy and I are of your love, your thoughts, your prayers, your phone calls, your texts, your cards, and your affirmation. We just really appreciate all of you. This has been an experience and a journey that I can uh, tell you all about maybe later, but there were a day or two when Joy got home from the hospital that we would start to say something, all we could do would look at each other and cry. Uh, she would fill it with tears or I would fill it with tears. But thank you all for food, uh, fellowship, just for the beauty. And you don't know how important each other, each other is to the other until you're without it. And we could not go see Joy in the hospital. She was quarantined. I was quarantined at home. Mine was very mild and light compared to her case. I want you to not be fr afraid of me, but I do want you to know I respect the distance and so forth. But uh, I went to take Joy to be checked, and I thought, well, while we're here, I'll be checked too. Well, then it turned out three days later, we got our reports, and we were both positive. But Joy was very sick, hospitalized over on a Friday till got out on Saturday. I thought they released her too soon. She declined on Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Finally, Tuesday, when we went back to the hospital, she was admitted for a week. And during that time, uh, the joy of the girls and I, Mary Beth in uh, upstate South Carolina, Molly in Myrtle Beach, uh, Molly would make mercy drops of food at the house and leave it on the front porch and then text me because we didn't want to expose anyone. But it, it was very mild with us. It was very much more serious with Joy. She has uh, prone to pneumonia. Hers was double in both lungs. And uh, I just appreciate most of all God and his grace, but also the staff at Grand Strand Hospital who helped her. She, we also see a pulmonologist in uh, Charleston for joy, uh, Dr. Huggins, who is originally from Loris, and uh, he's with MUSC and the VA hospital. And I felt so good that he would do phone consultations with the doctors and nurses back in Myrtle Beach. And that, that gave me some reassurance. But Joy would tell, want me to tell you this. If you have any symptoms at all, don't wait. You go get some help. Don't put anything off. It's uh, better to be uh, safe than sorry, as we were talking about at Sunday school. But don't uh, be uh, afraid to be tested. But also, there are so many more people, I think, who are positive that probably haven't even been tested. I just We got a text this week from a church at First Baptist Easley where we've done prayer retreats and conferences. Their whole staff got it, and they closed their church for two weeks. So uh, it's, it's quite an, an, an ordeal. I want to say to all of you, though, that how much I appreciate this day. I've been looking forward to the deacon ordination, and I was so disappointed when we were not able to do this in October because we had planned the deacon ordination, a breakfast, uh, the ordination for the next day on, on Sunday, the retreat on that Saturday, and I felt like I had messed everything up. But I want you to know... Uh, the powers that be took an executive made an executive decision. That's Lauren Cole and Coburn Powell, the chairperson and vice chairperson of the deacons, and they just canceled everything that we can. And I thought, well, it's out of my hands, but y'all were wise to do that for the safety of the church. But that was on Saturday, the retreat, and then on Sunday was the ordination. But today we're here to ordain our newly elected deacons most recently elected, and we celebrate with all of you and your families. We just are grateful for you, those presently serving, those past serving, and those who will be ordained today. As I was saying, as far as gratitude is concerned, uh, Lauren and Coburn and others of you have uh, kept in touch with us and then would explain the words to the church. I want to especially thank Fred Center and Eddie and uh, Patricia, I call her Patty Pat Pat, uh, for her music and her explanation of the hymn that Sunday. We watched you online. And uh, Fred, I never could get last Sunday. I don't know what happened. It's our computer, maybe, or my ignorance as far as how to get it. But I wanted to hear that sermon on, you said you were preaching a sermon that people may not like on tithing and giving. So uh, I'd like to catch that one too. But you did a wonderful job. And thank you. And thank you, Eddie and Patricia, for carrying on. And also Teresa uh, and Dinah in the church office. We're all a team, and I'm just grateful to be back with you today. I do want to say that if you'll notice on the back of the bulletin, the announcements, if you turn there, please, for a minute. 
there are several announcements uh, as far as looking ahead, and one of those concerns not only the deacon meeting this week and the drive-through supper with uh, pork chops, that'll be fun. Uh, Brad, are you doing those this week? That'll be great. And the Baptist men, is that sponsored by them, I believe? Um, next Sunday will be the community Thanksgiving service. It will be taped this week and broadcast next Sunday, so it will not be in the Presbyterian Church. It will be broadcast from the Presbyterian Church, and it will be pre-recorded this week. So our community Thanksgiving service, just help us spread the word, will be next Sunday at 6 o'clock from the Presbyterian Church. But you can watch it from the convenience of your home. You don't have to go to the church as a community. One of the heartbreaking things for us this week was Mary Beth premiered in a movie that's on the big screen. Joy and I and our grandchildren, two of the grandchildren, have minor roles in this, this movie, but it's called A Carolina Christmas, and it premiered last night. We didn't go to see it. I didn't want to go without Joy being able to go, but uh, we celebrate that. And if you hear of A Carolina Christmas, try to spread the word. It's clean, it's decent, it's family-oriented, and it's open to all ages. And we would appreciate your spreading the word wherever it comes in this area, maybe Wilmington or, or Whiteville or, or wherever it may be, a Carolina Christmas. But as we think about our holidays, I'm thankful for each day and each blessing. Let's pray together. Lord, we invoke your blessings on this service today. And as we enter the season of Thanksgiving, I especially am grateful for life and for health and strength. May not a one of us take anything for granted. And Lord, today I pray for the Williams, Lonnie, and John who are having difficult times. I pray for Oz and his continued grief over Lydia. And I pray for this church to realize how special they are to each other and to Joy and to me. Thank you for the good Sunday school lessons John Sauls has done on the first Sunday of this month and then again today. Bless him and his family for their love and concern as well. Lord, I, I pray for this service today. We celebrate with our deacons because we're doing something that is biblical. We will not only honor them today and ordain them, but we also thank you for their lives and their service. And Father, my prayer today as we worship together that we would lift high the cross of Jesus, that as we thank you for healing, for joy in all of us and all needs everywhere, some cases even unnoticed, may you heal each person. And may we thank you for our medical staff, but we thank you for your mercy. And may none of us wait till it's too late to go get help from our doctors and nurses. They are agents of your concern and care, and we thank you for them and all medical staff. And now, Lord, as we enter into this worship, we give you the glory, the praise, and the honor. And my prayer is made in the name, the strong name of your Son and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in whose name we celebrate and worship together. And all of God's children said, Amen. Thank you.
Thank you, Pat. That is one of my all-time favorites. I don't think she knew that, but um, I never get tired of that one, so thank you. It just lifts you up in the way it is written and played. Our opening hymn, Hymn of Praise, is found in your program on page, excuse me, page 5. Would you stand as we sing together, God our Father, we adore thee. Second chapter, verse 9, I read, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. That leads us to our next hymn, which is on page 6 in your bulletin. We are God's people. If you are at home and have a hymnal, it is number 383. Remain seated as we sing together. We are God's people.
That was a new one to me. I never heard that hymn. That's a great words and lyrics and a tune. I want to ask you to turn with me, please, in the Bible today as we find the uh, scripture for our service in Acts chapter 6. We re uh, preached on this passage, at least part of it, several weeks ago when we began this journey about servanthood and when uh, we also shared with Wallace Todd in our service that particular Sunday, she spoke about the, the act of servanthood. So that's what deacon really means, it's being a servant. If you turn with me please to Acts chapter 6 and it's the entire chapter. And in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Let me tell you right here, the Greeks and the Hebrews were already feeling jealous toward each other. The Greeks felt slighted because they weren't ministered to as well as the Hebrews were being ministered to. So the first servants were to help settle disputes. Isn't that kind of baptistic? If you can laugh with me on that, the, the deacons were caused, called to help settle disputes. Verse 2, then the twelve, these were the apostles or the disciples, called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. They were intent on studying God's word and proclaiming the truth of the scriptures. So they wanted some helpers. Verse 3, Wherefore, brothers, look you out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And the saying pleased the whole multitude. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith, and of the Holy Ghost, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch, whom they set before the apostles. And when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them. And the word of God increased. These are the results of what happened. The word of God increased. The number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly. And a great company of the priests, those who had been argumentative against Jesus, became obedient to the faith. They had heard his teachings before. They didn't follow them. But now they were seeing that they were true. Verse 8. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Then there arose certain of the synagogue, which is called the synagogue of the Libertines and Cyrenians and Alexandrians, and of them Cilicia and of Asia, disputing with Stephen, this deacon. And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which Stephen spoke. Then they stubborned, excuse me, then they suburned men, which said, We have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. And they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes and came upon him and caught Stephen and brought him to the council. And they set up false witnesses which said, This man ceases not to speak blasphemous words against this holy place and the law. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place and shall change the customs which Moses delivered unto us. And all that sat in the council, looking steadfastly on Stephen, saw his face as it had been the face of an angel. Now these deacons were settling disputes between the Greeks and the Hebrews, but it was also they who had to minister to the tables of the widows who were feeling neglected, but the apostles felt they should spend their time in studying God's word and proclaiming. And you can see what happened as the apostles representing the pastoral staff and the deacons worked together. People became obedient to the faith. The number of disciples grew. And those who had criticized Jesus even came to the faith. It's a beautiful story of teamwork, of people working together. But it doesn't end too happily for Stephen. Well, it does for him because he believed in the afterlife. But if you read in chapter 7, if you, as we read continually what happened, 
if I want to continue this chapter 7 if you'd like to look there verse 54 and when they had heard these things they were cut to the heart and they gnashed on him meaning Stephen with their teeth but he Stephen verse 55 being full of the Holy Ghost looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God and he said, Behold, I see the heavens open, and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice, and stopped their ears, and ran upon him with one accord. And they cast him out of the city, and stoned Stephen. This deacon had to face some punishment because of his faith. They stoned Stephen, and the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet, whose name was, can you say his name? Saul, who later became Paul and they stoned Stephen calling upon God and saying Lord Jesus receive my spirit as he called upon God and he knelt down and cried out with a loud voice Lord lay not this sin to their charge and when Stephen had said this he fell asleep that means he died I'm reading today from uh, my father-in-law's Bible. He was a deacon in several churches where they had been members. His name was James Cleary, and this Bible was given to him by his sweet wife, my mother-in-law, Joy's mother. And it says, Holy Bible presented to James A. Cleary, March 30th, 1965. That's 35 plus 20, that's 55 years ago, by his wife Mary, Jerry it was her nickname. But this Bible is, is precious because it's belonged to a man who not only served God, but who was a deacon in several churches, sometimes being the chairperson, chairman of the deacons. So I've never had the privilege of being a deacon, ladies and gentlemen. I was associate deacon in my home church of Blacksburg, South Carolina, but I've always respected deacons. I've always admired their servant heartedness. And literally, that's what it means. So today, I want to talk a little bit about servanthood, and I want to ask our three deacon candidates just to stand for a minute. Jeannie Carter, Peggy Underwood, and Ron Walters. And I want you three to know, it's got your names listed here, but I'm not directing this just to you three, but it's to all of us as a church. But we are so very proud of you three, and I apologize for not being able to do it when we had originally planned, but God has a plan for everything, doesn't he? And this is a perfect, beautiful day. Thank you. You may be seated. Lord, speak through the scripture today as we talk about deaconship and servanthood, and I pray your special blessings on Peggy and Ron and Jeannie and all of us as we look into your word, and it's in Jesus' name we thank you. Amen. Deacon is from the Greek word diakonos. Let's, let's say that. Diakonos, it means a helper or a servant. If you look at it historically, it was the deacon was a member of the lowest rank of the threefold Christian ministry. The first rank was the presbyter, which was a priest, then a bishop, priest, bishop, then the elder, and elders, and then the deacons. In various Protestant churches, um, the deacon is a lay official who was ordained and shares in the ministry of the congregation, not only serving the congregation, but also, very importantly, helping govern the congregation and governing not meaning not just meaning setting laws but helping people do what is right if they hold the office of deacon that's part of the responsibility of deaconship although the seven who were called the names that that we read in the scripture in Acts 6 were deacons were not called deacons in the new testament their role is described as diaconal regarding the first forerunners of the christian order of deacons as we understand them today at the top of your bulletin, would you look at that for just a moment with me, please? The Church at Worship, a service of deacon ordination. Read with me that passage from Acts 6.6. 6. Whom they set before the apostles, and when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them. It meant they were set apart for service. We're going to do the deacon ordination today. Dr. Center will be explaining it'll be a little different today about the laying on of hands, but it is a scriptural mandate as we read in uh, Acts 6. When we think about deacons, women deacons were there. They were servants and helpers. Phoebe was one of the first century Christian uh, 
deacons, women deacons, in Romans 16, verses 1 through 2, if you want to read about that. And Paul, remember Saul is the one who held the clothes for Stephen to be, I mean, the clothes of those who were stoning Stephen. Then later Saul became Paul. It was Paul who wrote most of the New Testament who referred to Phoebe as a deacon or a servant and he entrusted her, this is very significant, he entrusted her as a notable person, a woman in the church at Sincrea, Sincrea, to deliver his letter to the Romans. So it was Phoebe, the woman deacon, who delivered Paul's letter to the church at Rome. There are many words that could be describing deacon today. I thought if we took the word deacon, D-E-A-C-O-N, it could be dedicated, enthusiastic for the gospel, a, always aware of the needs of others and wanting to help. C, committed to the gospel of Jesus Christ. O, open to new ideas. We don't have to always do the same things that we've always done. As you may have heard, we're against anything we ain't up on, is what a little uh, deacon told a pa pastor friend of ours from seminary, a professor. They were going to try to start church training, and the deacon said, well, preacher, here in this church in Alabama, I believe it was, said, we again, anything we ain't up on. You can be open to new ideas and in know that there's always a need for you and your servanthood. I read uh, one passage that said uh, in a commentary, a, a sermon said, the deacon should remember he or she, male or female, should be exemplary in their lives they should be in a source of encouragement for other people within the church. They should be engaged, that means involved, in the life of the church, faithful to worship, faithful to missions, faithful to dinners, faithful to fellowship. Be seen and be engaged in the life of the church. Be enthusiastic and be enduring, always remembering that the work of the Lord goes on and it's de dependent upon you until you become hopefully not stoned like a Stephen, but until we see Jesus face to face and he can say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. I read a, a prayer that was Red Rock, Mississippi. I thought this was significant. We probably wouldn't pray it in this language, but I think this is very powerful. This old preacher stood up to pray at the ordination of the deacons, Jeannie and Ron and Peggy, and this was his prayer. O Lord, give thy servant the eyes of the eagle and the wisdom of the owl. Connect his soul or her soul with the gospel telephone in the central skies. Illuminate their brows with the son of heaven, S-O-N of heaven. Possess their minds with love for their people. Turpentine his imagination. Grease his lips with possum oil. Loosen his tongue with the sledgehammer of thy power. Electrify his brain with the lightning of the word. Put petual motion on his arms. Fill him plumb full of the dynamite of thy glory. Anoint him all over with the kerosene of thy salvation. And set him on fire with the unction of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, what better prayer could there be? We may not use those terms and that, that language in First Baptist Church of Whiteville or maybe anywhere, but listen to that prayer once again in these significant words. O Lord, give thy servant the eyes of the eagles, wisdom of the owl. Connect his soul with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Illuminate this servant. Possess his mind with love for the people. Give him an imagination. Help deacons dream of new ideas of outreach for the church. Loosen his tongue with the sledgehammer of thy power. Give him the lightning of the holy word. Fill him with the dynamite of the glory of God. Anoint him with salvation. Set him on fire with the Holy Spirit. If that prayer were to come true for these three deacons and for all of us as deacons in this church or all of us as members of this church, there would be no stopping to what First Baptist Church of Whiteville could become. St. Augustine said it this way. I've always loved this quote. If so, we will not be ashamed of the gospel. 
this is my quote. If so, we would not be ashamed of the gospel. We will do our jobs as pastors with enthusiasm and joy and determination and work together with our deacons. But these are the words of St. Augustine. He said, pray as though everything depended on God. Work as though everything depends on you. I want to just say to you who are being ordained, it's a fun role. I didn't get ordained with the laying on of hands as a deacon. I was ordained later as a minister, and that's been a fun ride, a fun journey to wherever we've been. But I just want to say to you who will be ordained today that we celebrate with you and your families. It's a great honor to be nominated. It's a great honor to be elected by your fellow church members. And it's a great honor that I hope you will be sincere about. Deacons have helped me through the years as a pastor. I want you to know that as one person phrased it, you're called to be servants, not celebrities. There's sometimes an arrogance that comes to deacons that I've always just frowned upon. Somebody would be humble-hearted and, and servant-hearted and they suddenly get empowered by being ordained as a deacon and then they suddenly turn into a different person. They become arrogant or pride-filled. And you know the middle letter of pride is I. I want what I want when I want it. The middle letter of sin is I, I want what I want when I want it. It's selfishness. And deacons who use the office of deacon to usurp power against others is not the role of a servant. Where does this whole idea of servanthood come? It comes from John chapter 13. And it's a beautiful passage. I won't read the entire passage right now, but from John 13, we read in the Holy Word of God these words. And Jesus said, He who would be the servant among you, let him come in servant spirit. And Peter, when Jesus came to him, said, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you shall have no part of me. And Peter said to Jesus, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said, He that is washed needs not to save to wash his feet, but is clean everywhere, and you are clean, not at all. I have washed your feet as your Lord and Master. You should wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Verily I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither is he that sent greater than he that sent him. If you know these things, happy are you if you do them. That's John 13, if you want to read that again, about servanthood. And that's the idea of the towel. A towel is a symbol of service or servanthood, of being humble to wash another's feet. I've seen this done at weddings where the bride or the groom would wash one another's feet as they begin the journey of marriage. But a towel represents servanthood. I pray today that you would remember that not only are deacons to serve, but sometimes deacons have a hard task like Stephen when he was ridiculed or spat upon and even, according to the Scripture, lied about. But sometimes deacons need to remember they're part of the governing body of the church. And if there's a matter that needs church discipline, it comes to the deacons. In one of my pastorates, our pastorates, we had an issue that came, and I felt so sorry for this situation because it was a staff member. But it was the deacons, three deacons, asked if they could meet with me, and we went to talk to this staff member. And he eventually gave his resignation of some things that were going on in his own life. It's not a fun job, deacons, but it's a job that has to be done. If we're doing the right thing under the the sign of the cross, that we have to also do the right thing in governing the church body. It's not easy, but it's necessary. But also remember that a moral issues not only hurt the person, they hurt the one who is involved in a life body of a church. And I, so, I say that it's better to discipline in the days to come than it is to lose the flock, as you may have experienced in the past. As I think about you all, you three, and the, all of us working together, it is a partnership. And my prayer today is that this will be a joyful journey that you will enjoy and that you will remember that we are together in this and God is together with us all, whatever our task may be. We're called to be servants. We're not called to be celebrities. 
And one final word. The idea of the board of deacons is kind of an antiquated concept that it means board, meaning ruler. You walk the way I say walk and, and I don't have much mercy for you. It's really the board gives this idea of the disciplinarian type of, of concept. But the servant role is for each of us to love one another in the mercy of Christ. Bring all us, uh, of us under his truth of the cross and know that the truth will set us free. Whatever we face, the truth of Jesus Christ will set us free. Later, these deacons are going to be given a certificate similar to this. They're going to be given a towel similar to this. And I want you to know as you receive these today, those being ordained, they're symbols of our love for you from this church. But also, as you begin the journey, may it begin not be, be a journey not only of service and discipline and sacrifice if necessary, but a servant role of joy that you bring joy to your family and others as you serve. It is better to give than to receive. And I learned this at a meal for the homeless in Myrtle Beach. I was helping a little boy cut his... Uh, Christmas ham one day he asked for help with it and I went over to him his little cousin was sitting across the table and said will you help me too and I went around to her and I helped her cut her meat and she looked up at me and she said giving is better than getting and I understood what she said but I asked her to repeat it I said what did you say honey and she looked up at me and she said giving is better than getting and I want you to know that truth will endure forever. It is better to give than to receive. And when we give as deacons who are servant-hearted, we will find that we are of all people most blessed. Pride can enter a pastor, and he can do the wrong things. Pride can enter a deacon. Pride can enter any of us, but I just ask us to stop. Is the action we're about to do or the word we're about to say really of Christ from Christ? Is it honoring him? Is it helping the body of Christ? Is it building up his kingdom? If not, we need to forsake it. Don't say it. Don't do it. If it is honoring him, praise God for more people who will honor him with their lives and their talents and their abilities. Would you pray with me? Lord, bless us today as we celebrate your loving care. I thank you for your mercy, and I praise you for this privilege of sharing briefly about deaconship. Lord, I remember the time that I've called on deacons to be a constant source of comfort, not only to talk over things with me as their pastor, but for me to help them and, Lord, for them to help me in the task of the ministry. And I thank you today for these who will be ordained, for those who have been ordained, and even those who will be ordained in the future of this great church. We praise you for the gift of servanthood that Jesus taught us when he washed feet as one of the last acts he did before he faced the cross that week in his life. In Jesus' name, may we follow his example, and we praise you for your blessings. Amen. There was one time on an issue in Myrtle Beach that I was called to make a terrific decision about something our church was going to be involved in. I had questions about it. And that day I called the deacon chairperson, the chairman, and I said, you have taken me out to eat. We've talked over many things, but I need you today, and I want to pay for your meal. And I took him to the Piccadilly Cafeteria at the Myrtle Square Mall in Myrtle Beach. He didn't really give me a lot of advice telling me do this or don't do that or, or whatever, but he listened. There's a gift of listening and letting somebody pour out their soul to you and then let God lead you. And his listening to me, letting reflective listening, it's called, helped me make up my mind because God told me some things I should do and some things I couldn't or shouldn't do in that particular situation. Deacons are very special, very important, as well as all church members. And I pray that you'll always find a listening ear, not only from your pastoral staff, but from each other. That's one of the greatest gifts we can ever give one another is to listen and to talk over things for the glory of God. So we want to be a blessing, don't we? I'd like to ask you to turn with me to that last hymn, Make Me a Channel of Blessing. It's 564 in your program. We're going to do stanzas one through three, I see in the bulletin. So let's read stanza four, may we please? Let's read it together. We cannot be channels of blessing if our lives are not free from known sin. 
we will barriers be and a hindrance to those we are trying to win make me a channel of blessing today make me a channel of blessing i pray my life possessing my service blessing make me a channel of blessing today this is our prayer this is the time of invitation if you want to recommit your life or make any other decision we'll be happy to receive you and may we stand and sing stanzas one two and three same time indeed it is a place of honor as your fellow church members have chosen you for this special place of service. And now would you hear these words. Having been chosen by this body of believers to serve as a deacon, do you prayerfully accept this responsibility with the desire to serve your Lord and his church as a deacon? Will you pray for the members of this body of Christ as together we share in the service to God and to those with whom, to, and to those whom, with whom he calls us to minister? Will you seek to grow faithfully in your walk with Christ and in his mission for you, and will you encourage, support, and sustain the fellowship of this Christ church in this place 
in your commitment of time, talents, and service to him. And now will all the deacons who will serve this year please stand at this time. Will all the deacons, will, will each of you as deacons of First Baptist Church covenant to serve faithfully the Lord Jesus Christ and willingly work together to bring glory and honor and praise unto the Lord our God? Will you personally commit yourself to sharing Christian love in your public and private witness? Let us listen to the choir as they present us a special message through music.
Thank you so very much, choir, for those beautiful words and the beautiful music that accompanied them. I'll ask our candidates to please take their places at the front of the church again, facing the congregation. At this point, I will ask you, the members of the congregation, to hear these words. Congregation, will you signify your commitment to join with these deacons in praying for them, encouraging them, laboring joyfully with them, and sharing faithfully together to make known the good news of Jesus Christ? If you will, please signify by standing with them. And let us all say together, we are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a household of God, a temple of the Spirit, a colony of heaven, the body of Christ. We commit ourselves to join together in this Christian love to serve our Lord and others in his name. And now would you join me in a prayer of dedication. Our loving Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for all of the gifts that you have given to us, the gift of faith that we could have a personal relationship with you, the gift of our talents individually as we seek to serve you in our own individual ways. And now, Lord, we come to dedicate these three individuals to your service as they have taken on the responsibility, the task, the privilege of serving you as deacons at First Baptist Church. And so we pray that you will bless each of these three in their own individual ministries. Grant them wisdom, grant them the capacity to hear, to listen, grant them the capacity to empathize, and grant them the courage to stand strong through all of the ministry that they will be engaged in as deacons here at First Baptist Church. Our loving Heavenly Father, we dedicate them to you and to your service as they minister in various ways, individually and with this congregation here at First Baptist Church of Whiteville. We dedicate them in their service to you. May God bless you and speak to you and work with you and grant you strength. Amen. Now I recognize uh, the chairman of our deacons, uh, Lauren Cole, for some words of appreciation. Good morning. Uh, I stand humbly in front of you today. Uh, I'm, we are so proud that you agreed to be nominated, you were elected, and you agreed to serve. We know the commitment that you have already demonstrated to us by attending meetings even before the ordination. Unforeseen circumstances caused us to change some of our plans, but they did attend the first meeting, and I look forward to your attendance at the meeting Tuesday night as fully ordained deacons of First Baptist Church. I may stand here as the chair, but that is only meaning that I am a part of an entire group that is going to help lead us through First Baptist Church during this coming year. We have trying times ahead of us. And we know that, but we are going to come out on the other side even more positive than we were when we came in. And I know that we'll be able to do that with your help and the help of our current deacons and also the help of our past deacons. We must never forget the ones who have come before us. And so I want to welcome you to our group. Be an active member. Donna Prince texted me after church last Sunday. We almost had perfect attendance of our deacons. I looked around today, and some could not be here because of unforeseen circumstances, but we have had great attendance from this group of deacons, and I am really proud for that. Dr. Brown, we're glad to have you back. We're glad that we could postpone this so that you could be a part of this. Fred, couldn't have done it without you, but we managed to, and I want to thank Donna, and I want to thank Coburn, and I want to thank the rest of the members of the Board of Deacons for helping us to decide what to do. This was a collective decision and not something that was done unilaterally. That's not how we do things. So we, did, we always have the health and safety of our congregation first. I want to echo something you said. You wanted to praise the health providers and the frontline workers for what they have done, and I want us to do that very same thing. And we have members of our congregation who serve 
as parts of those groups of people, and we want to make sure that they know how much we appreciate what they do. Lauren, there was one important thing that I overlooked a while ago, and we're going to go ahead and do it when you finish. Are you, are you ready? For, and that is that uh, we're not going to lay on hands as we normally do, but I just let it slip my mind that we need to do a virtual laying on of hands, and I will show you how that we'll do that. At this time, I'm going to ask you to please stand, and uh, you all remain in your places there. And we're not going to touch you physically, but after all, laying on of hands is a very important symbol, is it not? And the symbol remain, remains, uh, is going to be different, but the meaning remains the same as we're going to lay our virtual hands upon you. And so now, let's lay our hands upon you. Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, my father. Y'all may remain in just a second there, if you will. Um, thank you. You know what? I've experienced some new things at First Baptist Whiteville. A conference call, deacons meeting for t a couple or three months, Coburn, when you were chairperson. And uh, that was so unique uh, as we did our business over the phone. And I think even Charlie... Duncan said he even was cooking chicken bog at home while he could still have the meeting. And, uh, but it was a unique way. I'd never done a conference called Deacon's Meeting. And today, Fred, thank you for that unique, as we've discussed, the laying on of hands virtually. We may have started something new right here at First Baptist Church of Whiteville. But thank you for the beautiful job you did the past two Sundays and for being present today. And Lauren and Coburn and Donna, thank you for being officers this year and, and all of our current deacons. We, we thank God for you. The symbolism today is um, the certificate. This is one similar to what you will be receiving. They are here for you, um, Jeannie and Peggy and Ron, uh, with a towel for you that is for your remembrance of this special day. But also our other deacons, we have towels on the front of the pews here. If you would come by and just pick up your towel just as a symbol uh, that you are a servant. And if Jesus were willing the last night before he was crucified to wash feet in the upper room that's the symbolism that he would give us as servants today so deacons please come get a towel just remember that our role is to serve him to serve others and be a blessing and we will be blessed any further words Lauren or anyone thank you all for being here today I'm delighted to be back with you thank you for your continued prayers for joy uh, of course, normally we would have you come in by hugging necks, shaking hands, but we won't do that today. But let's just thank God for these three and all others who are willing to put their lives on the line as servants. Could we thank God this way? Thank you very much. May we stand for our benediction, please. God bless you all, and we thank God for you. Before we pray, they look at somebody today and just through those masks. I know you can't speak too well, but go ahead and give them a holy hug in the air, a holy hug. Choir, beautiful job today. Thank you. Thank, thank you all very much. Lord, we go forth now thanking you for this privilege of dedicating these deacons. Servanthood is a blessing, and it's also a biblical mandate. And if we say we love you, we must also love one another. If there's anything between us and another human being, may it be righted, made right in your name and with your help. Lord, we're humanly weak vessels. We're frail, but we want to be strong in you. So give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts to care for the needs of others. I praise you for these who are dedicated today, Jeannie and Peggy and Ron, and for their families. Thank you for all of our deacons, those past, present, and even future. And we go forth today to praise you for the privilege of serving you. And Lord, I pray this week that the deacons will meet in a joyful spirit as Lauren leads as chairperson. I pray for the drive through dinner Wednesday night to be successful and delicious as always. Bless the community service as we prepare this week for sharing it next week as the area ministers. And we just don't want to say we ever pass a day, Lord, without being grateful. 
and I'm thankful in Jesus' name. And we praise you for health and strength and recovery. And today, we end this service praying the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, together saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. God bless you.